Welcome to the Shape and Trace training video. In this video, we're going to take a look at going from sketch to vectors, which we can fabricate with in just a few seconds. So we'll start with just printer paper, shape of pen that came in the box. Let's do a quick initial. So there's our initial. So let's go from these initials to a fabrication ready file in just seconds. So I have trace running on my phone, pointed towards my trace frame with my paper and initials on it, hit capture. It's all very intuitive and natural, just like taking a photo. But in this case, we get vectors and vectors enable us to use most modern fabrication tools. So in this case, we've got outline, that'd be great for a vinyl cutter or something like that. I can also choose center line. So in this case, I want to engrave this into a cutting board. So I'm gonna save that, give it a name, put it on my files, SAM5. Put that aside. And there's the result. So this was cut immediately on Origin, which was able to see those files because they're both connected to the internet and engrave exactly this. No distortion, same dimensions, ready to go. We're not limited to Shaper Tools products. We can drop it on a USB drive or some other cloud service. Then you can use it on your vinyl cutters, laser cutters, water jets, your CNC machine, embroidering, you name it. Any modern fabrication tool that accepts vectors, this is the jump start you need to go from sketch to that vector format. Super easy, super quick. So let's take a look at uh, what comes in the box, what all these things are, and how to use them and get the most out of them. So uh, stick around, we'll get into the details now. Here's the trace box itself, all the key information's on the back here. Here's a look at what's inside. So Trace is set up as a one-time payment. So you pay for the frame, the hardware, and that will enable you to register Trace to your Shaper account. It's not like a subscription or a pay per Trace or anything like that. You just can use it from that point on. First up, here's the critical element, the Trace frame. So this is a sturdy plastic frame. It's dimensionally accurate, and you'll see all these markers in place enable us to capture anything that's inside this center aperture and turn it into vectors that are dimensionally accurate and flat, undistorted, and the correct scale. Flipping it over on the back, you'll notice a QR code. This is where we uh, activate the trace web page. And then there's the little friction pad on the bottom. This is what holds trace in place while you're capturing it with your camera. So this keeps your paper and trace from sliding around. Next up, we include a pen. You don't have to use this pen, but this one will get you started immediately. So just as a fine tip, kind of felt-like tip, which will enable you to get clean, consistent lines, and uh, as a result, clean, consistent outcomes. Last but not least, the Getting Started Kit. So within this, we have a little inspiration booklet. So this is just to get you uh, thinking creatively of what we can do with Trace. You can see a few of the uh, tests and ideas we've been mulling over. And then the getting started guide. This will just go through one through five. Should you need an extra primer printed? Pretty straightforward, we're gonna go through that now. We'll kick off with the QR code scanning. So where is that QR code? Yeah, it's on the back. So to scan the QR code, you just get your camera app and you'll see down the bottom here, we've uh, recognized the QR code, click it, and it'll take you straight to the trace registration page. So we'll take a look at that now. So here we go, we can register Trace here. Moving right along, if I have a Shaper account, so if I use Origin and it's registered and I'm using the Shaper Hub and all that, or Studio, I just continue to log in with those same credentials. If I don't, if this is the first product from Shaper that I've used, uh, here's an opportunity to create a Shaper account. So just enter your details here. We don't need to bother with that. We're going to go back and just use our existing video account. So we are going to register for Trace and now we are activated. So what this means is anytime I point this camera at a Trace, any of these frames, it doesn't have to be the specific one I ordered, it will enable me to start tracing. So what we're seeing here is question, do we want to allow Trace access to our camera? Now we need the camera to see the frame and work like this. So let's pick it up. Right, we've given it access to the camera. It is, however, gonna ask that again in the future. So I'm gonna hit the little AA button down on the bottom left corner there and go to web settings. So using these, I can go from camera ask. So this is specific to just the trace 
web page to allow. So now it's not gonna bother me every time I start off again. Now one more setting, if you just wanna polish things up a little, let's hide the toolbar at the bottom. So hit the double A option and then go hide toolbar. There we go, nice and clean. And we're not re-registering every time, you just do that once. Now we've registered Trace to our account, our Shaper account. We can go to a web browser and just type in down here, trace.shapertools.com and you're in business. And then one other way, flip your trace over, trace frame, and take a look at the QR code. So we can use this to access the trace web app. So you just point your camera at it, it'll be recognized, hit the button, and it's actually gonna load up, trace.shapertools.com. So it's exactly the same as typing it in, hit allow, the camera's now active, you're in business. So now with trace running, you'll see it says frame not visible. And then when it turns green, that's when it sees all the dots around the outside there of the frame, which means it's now ready to capture. And I'm gonna pull it back to where it feels natural and the whole frame fits on screen. When you see the mark that says ready to capture, hit the button, and then everything that falls inside the frame area is captured as a vector ready to cut. And now I can just choose to save that if I like. So save to SVG, that'll be saving on the device itself. Here are some examples of devices that work with Trace. So we have phones, tablets, iOS, Android, basically if they have a rear facing camera and a modern web browser, you're good to go. Here you see the trace UI, so it's very simple. Down the bottom is our capture button. Up the top is our live camera feed. That yellow notification there is just the current state of trace. Is it ready to capture or not? Can it see the whole frame? And then at the very top is our preferences. So. We'll take a look at that now. So here's the profile menu with the preferences at the top. So we can jump back and forward between inches and millimeters. This will persist, so the next time you use it, it'll remain in that setting. You can access the help and support menus. You can test your cameras. So this will show you all the cameras on the device and you can choose which one you default through. We're just defaulting to the regular back camera here, but you could click on another one and select that. So then down the bottom, we have our quick links to all the key Shaper products and services. So we have Studio, that's a quick, simple design package. Take trace designs, take them further in Studio. And then My Files, if you want to share a design across any other tools, drop it on My Files. And if it's a Shaper tool, it will show up there immediately. And then Shaper Hub, that's if you want to package together your designs and add notes, documentation, images, that sort of thing, uh, and share that as a project, or just keep it as documentation for yourself. Shape up the place for that. And then the shop, obviously, if you need cutters, t-shirts, hats, any accessories, jump on the shop. Go in here if you want to customize your account. So this is how you're presented to the community. You can choose your icon, upload an image. If you want to share links to your Instagram, bio, Twitter, you name it, update that there. Then at the very bottom, we have the opportunity to just sign up. So with that done, we'll close the profile and preferences menu. And we'll take a look at the UI elements. We're gonna see the buttons and features available in the actual interface itself. So let's quickly capture this example and we'll take a look at the options. Let's take a look at the trace UI from the top to the bottom. So top left, look for your preferences and settings and then top right, help. And they're working down through this middle area here. This is the canvas. So this is where you manipulate your vectors and view the output results of your captures. And then down the bottom is where you set settings for how you want your lines to be interpreted, different thresholds or recapture and save. So here's our result. You'll see it's dimensioned correctly. So this dimension will match this dimension. You'll notice it's dead flat as this is, regardless of what angle you shot it from. So we can recapture. So that's just return to the previous screen and snap another shot with trace. We can zoom in with just pinch and zoom in the edit area up here. And we can choose outline or center line. So that's just how we interpret these lines, either the outline, so each stroke gets a line around the outside of it, or center line, which is like if we wanted to engrave or just run a single line along each of these kind of capturing how we drew it. Then we can get into the modify settings. Now let's say trace has resulted in something like this. So we zoom in and we think we should be getting solid black lines, but we're getting a bit of noise. Let's hit modify. And instead of modifying vectors, we're gonna try and deal with this in the adjust scan settings. So at the moment, 
we've got a lot of noise and not the data we're looking for. So what we've got at the moment is a threshold set really low. So let's turn it up and see what trace gets us. So now we've got solid lines. So this is basically just choosing where the point is in the full range of black to white that we set a contrast threshold. So by turning it up, all of these solid lines fall right within that zone and we get clean outcomes. So if I hit done, now I get nice outlines and I can jump back and forward between center line, outline with excellent results. Now we can also, instead of looking at up here, adjust scan, which is what we just did, we can leave it in the regular modify vector mode. And there's two options here, there's select and smooth. So we'll start with select and I'm gonna just delete some elements. So it's behaving like a paintbrush. So if I use two fingers, I am panning and zooming. And if I use one finger, I'm painting. So I can paint out which elements I do not want to export. So if you've got some noise, some blotches, or even just creatively selecting elements you don't want to export, you can do that with that. And then if I hit done, you'll notice now I've got these solid chunks instead of a center line or the original lines that we scanned in. So you can do some creative things here and then send that over to your fabrication tool. Now, if we are satisfied with this outcome, let's take a look at accepting that and choosing where we save the file. So we can save directly to the device. So that would be save SVG. Keep in mind, you can do multiple of these. It doesn't vanish once you do one. So save to files. I'm gonna save it into downloads and just give it a name here. I hit delete and call it star five. Okay, so now that's going to be on my device. I can drop that on a USB, send it to my vinyl cutter, whatever digital fabrication tool I'm interested in. Now I can save again. Say I want to use it on Origin. So I can call it a star five, S-T-A-R five, and save that. So it's gonna tell me we're done. So now it's immediately available on Origin. If your phone and Origin are connected to the internet or Wi-Fi, they're ready to go. So you could start cutting that immediately on uh, another Shaper product. Then we can edit in Studio. So I'm just gonna go and do a new design. And you'll notice Studio kicks off. So this is the paid subscription software. There's also a free version, which has a limited feature set, which we are looking at here. So we'll just look at bringing it in. We won't be able to do all the fancy stuff like shape shifting and everything, but you'll get a rough idea. So all together, so they're grouped as one object with you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shapes or exploded with each of them independent. So let's take a look at that. Just gonna zoom out a bit, deselect everything and show you what that means by exploding them. So each one of these elements can be manipulated independently. So you could mess around with that, make some changes and then cut that with origin or send that, save it as another SVG with these manipulations intact. So that's a very quick look at Studio. I'd encourage you to look at some other videos about that if that interests you, but we'll go back. And the only other remaining option is share a screenshot. So if you've got an idea that you want to uh, share with someone, hit screenshot and they'll see what you see on screen. Add that to a text or you know, get some feedback or advice. So that's the save options. That's the modify options, the two different line approaches, center line, outline, and then just recapture if you want to start again and take another shot. I'm looking at the underside of the trace frame and you'll see these little no slip pads. So these are great for just holding your paper in place when you position it on top. So that's not going anywhere. So it's designed to work great, covers just a little bit of regular printer paper. So in this case, we're looking at letter, but the same applies for A4. Now keep in mind the aperture here is written on the box. So it's 274 millimeters lengthwise and 184 across is the area you can draw within. So you'll see here, this is the area where the friction pads hold it in place. And that works great for a range of pads, you name it. It's gonna be nice and secure, ready for tracing. Now your art will need a little buffer. So just keep that in mind if you've got a larger pad, this is the area that you can actually capture with trace. So just a quick look at two different line styles. The one on the left will not be great for trace. So because it's running out of ink, it's kind of broken up. 
So Trace is gonna be looking for details inside this line rather than this solid Sharpie line, which is very clean, very clear. So both center line and outline will work very well on a line like this, but not so much on a line like that. So the same applies to things like watercolors, pencil lines, anything where a line could not be a clear, high contrast solid line, expect to get sort of unpredictable noise and detail in your SVG. Everything's looking good, right? I've got ready to capture, I can see the whole frame, but I've got this big veiling reflection in there. So you'll notice as I move around, it covers up various parts of my drawing. I've just got a light that's bouncing on my shiny paper and it's preventing me capturing what I'm after. So we're gonna go back and then we'll reposition. So usually you can either shut the light down or just reposition your camera to get a better result. I'm gonna move over here and you'll notice now the veiling reflection is no longer covering my drawing. If I hit capture now, Trace's unique ability to get the same results regardless of what angle you're taking the shot from mean if you're encountering shadows, reflections, or any other kind of weird issue, chances are you can just reposition the camera and intuitively get what you want without any hassle. So here's another example. We're going to exaggerate a shadow. This can often look quite subtle to our eyes, but you'll see here, if we capture this with trace, it's gonna capture the shadow as well. So that's in this case a frustration, but you can use it to your advantage and actually capture shadows if you want. But just keep in mind, if you're casting a shadow, you may wanna reposition your phone and capture from a different angle. We'll show you some techniques for resolving this. So here's an example of a shadow, which we do not want. We just want our mark. So under modify, there's a couple of options. A, in the modify vector mode, we can just go for the select remove option and scribble that out. There we go. That's one example. We'll reset this by going to adjust scan. Now we're back to our original state. Now let's see if we can just modify the threshold level under and just scan to remove this dark area. So we'll drag it way down too far. We're getting noise in our, uh, in our line. And then we just have to find the perfect balance between capturing the shadow, which would be way up here, and getting too much data in our lines. So somewhere around the 45 mark seemed pretty good. Looks good. So two options there to solve problems with uh, shadows in your work. So here's an example of capturing a trace from a mark on wood grain. And you'll notice all the little wood grain details are showing up in the trace. There's some options here for manipulating that using trace, but just keep in mind, if you can make the background lighter and the line darker or the opposite, you'll get more contrast and more chance of success any noise or details you don't want that Trace can see, it's gonna to try to capture. Here's a challenging situation for Trace. So you can see there's low contrast here. So the line is broken up and sort of incomplete. It's not a solid black line I've drawn. And then the background is actually quite dark. So let's see what Trace thinks of that. So this is where Trace will struggle to find what it is we want captured. So instead of attempting to recover from all that noise, around my geometry I want to capture. I've just gone ahead and set this up for success on a white background and I get the results I'm looking for. So starting down here, I'm gonna pull back. It says frame not visible. So you can see there's no frame visible on the screen. Uh, the moment it is visible, you'll see it all goes black and white and it starts to uh, show you what it's trying to capture. So I'm gonna go, you see down here, it says ready to capture. I'm gonna hit the green button because the frame goes almost to the full edge of my screen. And there we go, great outcome. I'll do it again, so I'll go recapture. And the moment that the frame is on screen, it turns green and I can capture. If it leaves screen by enough, you'll notice it goes back to the colored camera feed. So if you see the colored camera feed, you're not ready to capture, you gotta make a correction. But there we go. Uh, so I can go at a, at a bit of an angle. You don't wanna go at a crazy angle, that'll give you a sort of low res result. So at sort of a, just a natural angle, slightly offset, sometimes you're gonna have to move around to avoid, avoid shadows. Like if I was, you know, to avoid this, I might have to go to a different angle. We can just snap from any of these angles. You notice here the star is distorted, but I'm getting almost exactly the same result as I was from any other angle around here. 
So that's pretty much it for capturing uh, with trace. Just pull back naturally towards you, bit of an angle, avoid reflections, avoid shadows, and snap when the frame goes basically to the edge of your capture image there, and you'll get consistent results. So we'll do a quick sketch of a wrench here. Let's take this shape we've created. So this is intentionally a kind of a uh, messy little drawing uh, designed to create a kid's toy of a wrench. The goal here is to do something organic or something that captures line work that you wouldn't naturally do in a vector editing app. So we're looking for the, the imperfections here. Now I'm going to capture this with trace. So trace is active there. It says ready to capture. And I'm just going to hit capture and we're going to get vectors ready to go. So this would take ages in a vector editing app or in CAD, and you'd have a much more sort of mechanical looking thing. This, I can jump between center line or outline, and I've got a very sort of organic, grungy looking object, which is what we're looking for here. So this is now defined as a vector. We can take this into any fabrication tool we like, say Origin or a laser cutter, vinyl cutter, you name it, and start creating exactly this shape. So we were entirely drawing, clicked one button basically, and then save this object and we're in business. So it can be tempting to capture directly the 3D object with Trace. And if the form, the outcome doesn't really matter, you can totally do that. But you'll notice here, it's actually included all of my shadows as part of that. And we can manipulate that a little bit, but realistically Trace is designed, if you wanted to get the perfect shadow foam for this, you would actually trace it onto the paper and then get an accurate result from that. So the 3D object, it's casting shadows and there's sort of parallax and things that would give you the same problems as if you had a regular camera. So I'm using a long nose pen here. I'm just going to try and hold it in place and go around and trace this like so. Now I'm trying to keep my object from moving and I'm trying to keep my pen dead vertical. There we go. So I've traced around the outside of this, and now I'm just going to capture this. So that's now a shape that I can use to cut accurate shadow foam from. So if you're paying attention, you'll notice there's a little blemish here, and you'll probably get that occasionally when you're tracing elements. The good news is the inside curve is actually very accurate, and here we have both the inside and the outside. So let's just quickly modify this. I'm going to deselect everything and then zoom in there and just show you selecting just the inside object. There we go. And you'll notice now we've got very clean outcomes. So this will be perfect for making shadow foam. And this is the little fit back to uh, the original zoom level. So we're good to save that now. The scissors came quite proud of the surface, so they weren't great for capturing accurately with trace directly without tracing them. So I'm just going to put some double-sided tape on the back of this leaf, press it down, now what we have is a situation where the leaf is flat, coplanar with this sheet of paper. So that's where Trace is its most accurate. So now tracing this leaf as it's dead flat, not casting shadows, we can get some pretty good outcomes directly from that. So that's an example where if something's flat enough, we can get very accurate outcomes. To get the most accurate outcome for 3D objects, try to trace them, get them down onto this plane, onto the paper, and nice and high contrast. That's it, it's a creative tool, so you use it however you like. If you find something you want to capture, chances are you'll get some pretty interesting results straight out of Trace. So uh, by all means, give it a go, it's worth a shot. So here's an example of a, a sort of a sketch style where there's just lots of hatched lines. And sometimes people, you know, they want clean circle there. So start off with pencil and then try to capture it, you'll notice you get kind of nasty outcomes. So that's probably not what you're after. So I'd recommend in these cases, just drop another sheet over it. And then we'll just use that as a reference to get us a single curve. So if I recapture this, it is a lot more in line with what you're after. So sometimes you just have to trace over what you're doing with a view to getting clean, crisp lines to work with. So if I go center line, and then choose here to uh, smooth this a lot. We should get, you know, a pretty effective shape based on, based on where we started. So this is an example of a scan of a really suboptimal sort of situation to begin with. And so there's a lot of noise here, a lot of details we don't want. So we just want this kind of clock hand type thing here. 
it's actually done a pretty good job. We could probably recover that in studio or using our tools to modify our selection and remove all the other elements we don't want. But another solution might be to do a bit of work here with vellum. So this is, it's a matte, semi-transparent paper that a lot of people use for drafting and things to just extract the details they want and clean it up. So that's an easy way for you to hand trace exactly what you want. So now I've got the vellum on top of white paper so that we get our contrast. And now it's set up to be really perfect for tracing with trace. So I'm now going to capture this and we shouldn't be in a lot better situation. So now that's a really clean outcome we can work with directly. If you've got kids or just a bit of time to kill on a rainy day, uh, get out a point source light just off to the side a little and start making shadow puppets. They capture really great. Yeah, have fun with that. Trace is robust, but there's a few common sense things to take into account. Don't bend trace. It's not gonna cope well with a great big bend in the middle of it. You want it to lay flat always. So store it flat, store it away from harsh abrasives. Don't put it in your sort of sandpaper drawer or something like that. This top surface is the critical one where the dots are. So don't get that marked. Don't expose it to alcohol or solvents. So when you're cleaning it, just a wet cloth is all you need. Don't get in there with sort of goo off or something like that because the adhesive here could come free. If you do have any problems with your trace hardware or software, contact support at shapertools.com and they'll be happy to help you out. So keeping all that in mind, you're gonna get great outcomes with trace and we expect to see you cutting and fabricating in an instant. So that concludes our Shape of Trace training. This is the basics, there'll be more to come. Keep an eye on uh, YouTube sessions, the community, and jump on Instagram. Hashtag ShaperMade is where most people post their Shaper content. So uh, looking forward to see what you do with it. Super exciting product, Shape of Trace, enjoy.